Today on Forbes, SpaceX's $17 billion EchoStar deal won't work without its mega rocket Starship. With two thirds of the satellites currently in low orbit, SpaceX has become the king of the heavens, overseeing a growing broadband internet empire on the ground. But when it comes to the nascent business of using satellites to connect to mobile phones in remote areas beyond the reach of telecom towers, SpaceX has been far more constrained. So far, it's been working with a narrow band of T-Mobile cellular spectrum in the US, only able to relay text messages. Billionaire Elon Musk's company took a step to break out in a big way last week, announcing the purchase of a long-coveted chunk of spectrum from EchoStar that's perfect for beaming signals to mobile phones from space. The hefty price tag, $17 billion, makes it SpaceX's largest acquisition by far. The company touted that the spectrum it's buying will allow it to field new satellites that provide 20 times the throughput and full 5G phone service, complete with video calls from on top of any scenic mountain you want to climb. But those promises come with a caveat. Those new satellites appear to be designed to be launched by the giant rocket it's developing, Starship. Caleb Henry, an analyst with Quilty Space, said that if Starship doesn't work as promised, that would be a giant monkey wrench. He said that SpaceX's direct-to-sell plans are, quote, dependent on Starship. Though its most recent test flight went well, breaking a streak of three straight that ended with spectacular explosions, questions still abound as to the soundness of Starship's design and whether it can deliver the drastic reduction in launch costs that Musk has promised. The rocket is designed to carry 100 tons of payload to low Earth orbit, more than four times as much as SpaceX's workhorse, Falcon 9. To take advantage of that, SpaceX has built a larger, more powerful next-generation broadband satellite that's too large to be launched in meaningful numbers by Falcon 9. Henry said that the company is most likely doing the same with the next version of its direct-to-sell satellites to provide better service. He said, quote, When you want to close a link with a weak antenna in a phone, you have to make the satellite a lot more powerful. SpaceX put 655 of its first generation of direct-to-sell satellites into orbit on Falcon 9, but it halted launches in June and is now waiting on Starship. Musk is promising that the rocket's huge payload capacity, plus making it fully reusable, will also allow SpaceX to radically decrease launch costs, allowing it to build out service at an affordable price to customers. Proving out reusability remains contingent on the rocket not blowing up on a regular basis. But SpaceX also needs to show that Starship can actually haul 100 tons to low Earth orbit, said Henry. The latest version it's tested is only designed to carry 35 tons. The deal itself isn't as big a lift for SpaceX, even though $17 billion may look like a big chunk of change for a company that Musk claims is headed for $15.5 billion in revenue this year. It could fetch $4 billion to $5 billion from leasing the spectrum for terrestrial use by cellular companies, according to Philip Burnett, a telecom analyst at New Street Research. And the $8.5 billion in stock that's part of the deal is essentially, quote, free, given the enthusiasm of investors for the company. SpaceX is reportedly in the middle of raising capital at a $400 billion valuation, and it wouldn't have problems tapping the debt markets to finance the deal, Burnett said. Nonetheless, analysts were surprised by SpaceX's willingness to pay out as much as it did given the uncertain prospects for making it back in the nascent direct-to-sell market. For full coverage, check out Jeremy Bogaski's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.